Teferi. I spent my entire life learning about time. How to manipulate it. Surrender to our perfection! How to control it. How to run from it. But time always catches up with me. Were you followed? There are sleeper agents everywhere. Yes, Teferi. We are everywhere. And you will surrender to our perfection. were an oath to protect the innocent. The gate watch. <laughs> Don't waste your breath. Let me take the stone. I can fix this. Nobody has to die. Running, dodging, hiding. It's what you do best. But where has that gotten you? I tried to save my people. I, I tried to save Dominaria. The Phyrexians did not destroy your home, Teferi! You did! All this time, you still can't face the truth! You are a coward! Enough! This ends now! Time always catches up with me. Now, it's time to face it. Hello, hello, this is Joe from Nerd in Korea. So we are doing another set or a fat pack opening. So we're looking at the top value cards and my budget picks. This is the top value cards. Uh, we're doing Dominaria United. This is a set I really like. Um, it's actually retained value much better than a lot of sets usually do. This is two years old already. So usually the price crashes pretty quickly. This has been floated up a lot more than other sets. Um, partly because some cards that weren't super valuable went up in value and a lot of the top value cards actually dropped out so one of my top picks is actually one of those cards that dropped in value so i'm hoping to get that one but we're going to talk about that later okay so we're going to look at the, at the top five value cards and this is the current top five value right not on release we're kind of looking at this is a bit of a throwback to uh yeah or the set is a throwback, but the values are current, is what I'm trying to say. So yeah, I'm using MTG Goldfish for the price, because it's frankly just much easier if you're looking at a full set. I am going to put the full set list in the description as well. If you want to check that out, you can do that. And yeah, this is... Uh, uh, the value of this set, I think, is interesting to look at. Partly because it's right before they kind of bumped up the price of the Magic products. So this is like cheaper, but the value in the set is actually higher than a lot of newer sets. So it's kind of an anomaly in that sense. Anyway. Okay, first up. 
Plaza of Heroes. Okay, this is a land. You can tap it to add a colorless. Or add one man of any color. Spend this man only to cast a legendary spell. Legendary spell, not legendary creature. So that is much more open. There's a kind of a lot of like tribal, uh, or typo, I should say. Sorry, bah, I'm old. Um, typo decks that focus on legendary. So, it, which is really nice to focus on because you can do legendary and something else, right? You could do like legendary cat, legendary demon, legendary elemental, whatever you want. And uh, it's pretty good support for legendary anything in a lot of them. So, yeah. Add one mana of any color among legendary permanents you control. This is where it gets crazy in like commander decks because your commander is going to have all your colors anyway. So. And it has to be legendary. So basically, this is like an extra uh, command tower. At worst, it's an extra command tower. And you can pay three and tap it. Remember, pay three and tap on a land is basically pay four. But anyway. Exile Plaza of Heroes. Target legendary creature gains hexproof and indestructible until end of turn. Lands that can, even though you have to exile it, that's kind of a big downside. But hexproof and indestructible. Even if you just have this on the battlefield and you've got open mana, people are probably going to be like, yeah, that target and removal, I won't use it on that person's like legendary creature or commander because there's no point. Uh, legendary... Oh wait, so let me double check. Yeah, it is legendary creature. It specifies creatures, so you could not use this on other legend, like legendary enchantment or something. It would not work. Which is uh, a bit of a downside, but anyway. So this plays into an emphasis on legendary spells. That's something they kind of started pushing in, uh, I think around this time. There wasn't a lot of support for the legendary before this, but there is quite a bit in this set. So yeah. Yeah, a land with hexproof indestructible option is pretty amazing. I think this is what really bumps it up into like, this is 808 presently, and that's why it's kind of maintained that value. I actually have two of these Usually, if I get the card, it drops in value, and this one didn't really, so that's fun. Temporal Lockdown. Okay, one white white for an enchantment. When it enters the battlefield, exile each non-land permanent with mana value two or less until it leaves the battlefield. Okay, so this might not sound super impressive, but it's really easy to like throw into a deck where you have a generally higher mana cost which is usually a downside, but this is the kind of card that makes it into a, a benefit. So yeah. Uh, temporarily removing a large number of permanents from the battlefield can be enough to get the win, right? It is only temporary. I think a lot of people go, oh, well, you know, it's gonna, they're probably going to come back. Maybe, maybe not. But also, that even that gap you're making is uh, going to be enough for you to pull out the wind a lot of times. Especially if they've got, well, yeah. Decks usually have a number of two cost spells. This will also destroy pesky tokens. So that's kind of where I look like at this for, as, um, you're getting, all the tokens are zero cost and as soon as they get exiled, they cease to exist. So if you're dealing with someone who has, who's like making a whole bunch of treasures or something and they're just outvaluing you, you can just exile everything and be like, okay, even, even if that, enchantment gets removed and they're supposed to come back the treasures don't come back they're just gone right 996 timeless lotus out of the top five this is the one i really want um so for five mana it's a legendary artifact and enters the battlefield tap tap to add wooberg so white blue um black red green i always find that order really weird i feel like black should be at the end but okay um Wow, yeah. It's, if you've got a Wooberg deck, if you've got a five color deck, this is just like fixing all your mana issues probably, right? I mean, I guess some things can have a casting cost with two of the same mana symbols, like red, red. It wouldn't fix that necessarily, but it would make it a lot easier. So you'd be halfway there at, at least. Okay, 1532. Liliana of the Veil. Okay, one black, black. So cheap, first of all, mana-wise cheap. Legendary Planeswalker. So we've got a Planeswalker this time, and it's a Liliana. Each player discards a card as her plus one. You can really make it 
do a lot, you know, get a lot of advantage about, out of that, especially in like a multiplayer format. That's something where it is hitting you, but you can plan for it, first of all, and you can, uh, you're always going to be like taking one card away from three players and one from yourself is still, you know, net loss for other people. You can have extra card draw, you can have madness, you can have delve, you can have all kinds of things. There's a lot of ways to make discarding into an advantage for your deck. Anyway, minus two, target player sacrifices a creature. So, it's only minus two and is removal, so that's a benefit right there. Downside, sacrifices a creature means they choose, right? So yeah, they just have to sacrifice a creature, it could be any creature. So if they've got a big, uh, you know, scary creature and a token creature, they're going to do the token creature. So eh. But this is where it gets really crazy. Minus six, her ultimate is separate all permanent uh, target players controls into two piles. Okay. All permanents, all, including lands, not land, non-land permanents, just all permanents. That player sacrifices all permanents in the pile of their choice. So basically you cut their board in half and you say, choose one. And then, uh, yeah, they, uh, they choose one and lose the other half. Um, very easy to use this opportunistically. You Cutting someone's board in half is going to pretty much end their game. Like they do get to keep playing of course, but uh, half the value they've occurred during the game is uh, gone. Just like that. Um, yeah, uh, that's a real mean thing to do. Again, you want to use this with like a pr proliferate or something like that, where you can get a lot of extra things and uh, hopefully trigger this more than once even, but you can set it off very quickly is the main thing. Probably on the first turn it's played because everyone's going to be like, yeah, big target right there. Any removal, any attacks, they're coming straight at her, right? Anyway, 1795. Shuldred the Apocalypse. Okay, this is the big money one right here. Two black black. I actually got this card and it maintained value. What? Anyway, okay. She is a four or five with death touch. Whenever you draw a card, you gain two life. Okay, sure. Whenever an opponent draws a card, they lose two life. Whoa. Um... I would not recommend this as a commander. It's great in the 99. Um, I guess I always think about things in commander terms, but this is something where you can two life every time they draw a card. There's so many like blue decks and things like that. They're just going to be drawing cards, drawing cards, and they think it's like a huge advantage, and they'll just be draining their life out very, very quickly. Even a commander, they have 40 life starting, right? Uh, that's 20 cards. You draw one card every turn automatically. So yeah, even in three turns, that's six life gone. And whatever other card draw they have is gonna knock them down. So this maybe isn't like a single finisher kind of thing. If you combine it with like uh, force fruition or something like that maybe then, but yeah. Um, 77.99, whoa. Okay, very happy I have this one. Okay, now I'm going to look at my top pick. So this set has a lot of great cards. So my top pick is one that used to be on the in the top five on release, but has fallen in value. Not a lot. I think it's number seven on the list now. But anyway, okay. Silverback Elder. Um, so two green, green, green. That's probably why you're right there. The casting cost is a headache for a five-seven. Ape Shaman. And whenever you, uh, you, a creature, oh, sorry, whenever you cast a creature spell, choose one destroyed target artifact or enchantment. Just removal, automatic removal every time you cast a creature. Um, boy, it, okay, I do want to point out, it is cast a creature, right? It's not creature enters. So if you're doing a token thing, those to tokens entering, they don't count. They don't matter. You have to cast actual creature spells. And it is cast, not just return from the graveyard or something. Cast, okay? 
Anyway, option two, look at the top five cards of your library. You may, may put a land card from among them onto the battlefield tap. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. A land, okay? A land? Not a basic land. Again, with many of these things, it matters more what they don't say than what they do say. And what it doesn't say is basic. So, yeah. Um, just any land that you can find in the top five, you can put straight in. If you've got some kind of tap try land, you're just getting it in as tap anyway. So hey, whatever, good enough. Um, this just goes with so so many decks. You want to? You, it's great for mana fixing, but you really the casting cost is maybe you lean more toward like a mono green or dual color green deck anyway. But 573. Okay, so this has been my review here. Um, what's your favorite card from this? Um, oh, okay, yeah. What is your favorite card from this set? I, uh, again, I am going with Silverback Elder from mine. I'm hoping I pull one of those. I have opened this before and not gotten Silverback Elder. I was very disappointed, but we'll see what happens. All right, take it easy.